Today I'm giving you 10 tips to drop more kills on the new map Vondel. I'm a 4.5 KD player. My whole goal is just to help you improve. So I've got a bunch of tips for you today while breaking down a high kill win. Now jumping in here immediately guys. Tip number one. Early game awareness. And here's what I mean by that. Vondel as a map is just ginormous. But specifically the POIs. The POIs are massive. They're bigger than any resurgence map that we've had previously. Here's why that is so important. Especially early game. When we are landing here at stadium. If we hot drop this side. We drop straight down, try to get a gun really quickly. We are not going to see other teams flying into this side. There could be two teams, three teams, you know, there could be a bunch of teams, and we're actually going to see that immediately right here. Notice the one guy flying in backside. He's like right on that crate straight ahead. He's right here. Now, I will say, guys, I will not land on the field anymore. I love Stadium. It's my favorite drop. I will always land on one of the sides because fighting on the field is tough early. You can get shot from a lot of different directions. Notice the minimap, one on my level across, one above, and then this guy is a third party. So I don't see that guy. I go down when we talk about playing the actual field early. Notice that T-Cap's going to look over me and I'm going to be able to get myself revive off, right? So somebody got beat down. T-Cap gets it down right here. I'm going to go ahead and reload the Bass P real quick after I throw this plate in and then I'm able to get kill number two. So when we talk about early game awareness, because of the size of the POIs, guys, yes, you need to find floor loot guns you're comfortable with. You want to be looting for loadout and plates and ammo, but you've got to have your head on a swivel. Some games I get like 10, 10, 12 kills early game with floor loot and I'm not even able to think about loadout and looting up that much. Other games real quick by the way, other before I jump into tip number two, other games it's like nobody lands and we can get a quick loadout and then roll so have your head on a swivel, be ready to fight teams that are around you. Now tip number two is going to be minimap levels. I jump in this early because we have the UAV up guys, there is a lot of height on this map so you got to be aware of not only where, t where people are in relation to you, are they on your level, are they below you, are they above you, but also where they are moving too. Big tip that not a lot of people uh, know, and I, I constantly tell people this, UAVs ping like every three seconds, every two to three seconds. So I'm kind of timing when I'm looking at the minimap to try to get a sense of where enemies are moving to. Now, after we get this kill, guys, we are going to be at uh, kill number four right here, and we are going to jump into tip number three, which is going to be plates and backpack management. I have played this game a ton this part thus far. I've played a lot of games on Vondel. The common theme th seems to be a lack of plates. Remember in the beginning of Ashika when it was like impossible to find plates and we were always fighting without plates? That's it doesn't feel to that extent, but it does kind of feel like that a little bit right now where there are times where I don't have plates and I can't find plates. So don't be afraid to buy plates. Don't be afraid to buy an armor box and use that to your advantage. They are 2,500 now, not 2,000. Now, the other thing is backpack management. I want you to watch this right here. Notice I have two plates. So this plate right here is going to auto pick up. You're like, Joe, we know about auto pick up already. Here's what's changed. In your backpack, you have five different slots, right? So you can have plates, self revive, you know, ammo, Kill streaks, whatever it may be, uh, lethal tactical, whatever. So now you only auto pick up six plates. So if you are just auto picking stuff up, you are only going to have a maximum of nine plates three right here, and you're going to have six in your backpack. Backpack management is going to be important. You are going to have to pay attention to your backpack. You are going to have to drop ammo. You're going to have to grab a plate, at which point the other two plates in that slot will then pick up. So you are going to have to pay attention to how many plates you have and make sure that you are managing that backpack. As we're rotating over to loadout, guys, as I said before, my whole goal is just to help you improve. If you are looking to get better, make sure you do drop a subscribe below. Like I said, guys, four and a half KD player. I'm all my videos to try to help you improve. Now, tip number four, guys. Gonna be an obvious one. Talk about this all the time, especially on a Sheik Island loadout, right? Loadout's still very important. I told you earlier that, yes, there are games that I fight early game with just floor loot, and I'm very comfortable with it, but let's let's not deny the fact that I'd rather have my loadout guns, I'd rather have my lethals and tacticals, and I'd rather have my own perk package. Perks are very valuable, guys. High alert. I think double time is going to be really important on this map because of the outplay potential. High alert is because of how many people play on rooftops. So we're always knowing when we're getting looked at and if we can break that line of sight. You know, and I am running resupply. A lot of people are running fast hands. I still think resupply is very valuable, even though it did get a nerf. Everything resupplies in 50 seconds now as opposed to 30 seconds. Um, notice I am still running smoke grenades. I'm very close to switching to stims just because I haven't found much of a use for smokes yet. 
Tip number five, guys, rotations. Now, obviously, rotations is always going to be based on information. We do have enough for a UAV here. This is a pretty easy rotation to go back into stadium. Some games, you are not going to have to rotate. Or maybe you rotate very, very, you know, a very close proximity. There was a game not too long ago where I dropped 20, literally fighting right here. This was it. I just kept going back and forth. Stadium to here, to stadium to here. I kept going back and forth. So you don't always have to rotate a far way, but it's going to be based on information. We have the UAV up right here. The other thing that I will say, guys, if you are new here, a few other ways that you can find people, listen for teams fighting. That's going to be the number one way that we can find people. You will hear teams fighting before you see them, before you, you know, or anything like that. So listen for teams fighting because it's a huge advantage. Of course, we got to capitalize on minimap pings. Notice we get the thirst right here. We notice that two are down below. So we're going to go ahead, challenge that with momentum, play a little bit of positioning here with our Lockman 556, which is still a good option. Still playing around with what the meta is going to be this season and, and what I feel the meta is going to be. So we're going to go ahead, push down here, and we are going to get this thirst for kill number five right there few other ways that you can find people getting height height's gonna be a big one on this map guys playing rooftops and just trying to see what you can find of course then you can jump off and fly somewhere um i don't know if there are redeploy balloons i don't feel like i've really seen many redeploy balloons on this map thus far um now right here this is a big one guys i don't know why minimap pings are bugged but i just got a kill now you, at first, you're like, Joe, it pinged the minimap after the kill, right? We got the minimap ping right here. That's his teammate. Look at, I got like five teams right here. So after you get a kill, make sure you're taking in all of this information right there and using that to your advantage. Now, we're through uh, five tips thus far, guys. Guys, early game awareness, plates, backpack management, minimap levels, loadout, and rotations. Let's go ahead and jump into the second five right here. Now, we're going to go ahead and play a little bit of high ground here, guys. Trying to figure out where our next rotation is going to be. Of course, being on the roof, I'm able to easily get that kill. See a slight uh, slight TTK increase there where I stopped shooting just for a second because I thought I was potentially going to have him down. But this high ground allows me to kind of see people flying in. And once again, we get that UAV up. So now we can go ahead and rotate over here. I'm going to push forward because we're going to fly over this way so guy up top on the roof there not really a good spot to challenge let's go ahead and push over uh towards tcap here in a second now next three tips guys are going to be high ground and parkour trust high alert and live pings i'm telling you these in advance because this is going to happen very quickly we kind of talked about high ground a little bit especially when you are fighting guys high ground is very valuable being able to give yourself cover being able to shoot down on enemies now two things that i want to say let me say let me talk about high alert here first and then we'll talk about parkour trusting high alert guys especially on this map when you're on rooftops as long as i am not getting high alerted i am perfectly fine here if i get high alerted from behind i can easily drop down kind of lay prone right here i can smoke i can get in this little doorway right here a lot of different ways that we can escape but just trust your high alert when you are on rooftops and use that to your advantage it's even more important now than it is than it is on a sheikah the other thing that i will say guys is parkour Right, very easy to parkour these buildings, which gives you a lot of outplay potential. I'll give you an example here. We're going ahead, we're pushing up, we're going to go ahead and push across. You know, maybe we get high alerted. We get shot in the back. All of a sudden right here, I start sprinting while plating, which we're going to be talking about. And now I can parkour across you, just under my camera here. I can get in this doorway. I can play down below in the stairs, and then I can go ahead and re-engage. Another big one, just a little tip, guys, because of how close the, the streets are and, you know, you have trees and stuff, live pings are actually really valuable. I think live pings are very valuable on this map, even more than they were on Ashika, simply because Ashika is so wide open. It's pretty easy to keep Keep track of where people are moving to but on this map where everything's a little bit more close quarters and and you know these sight lines can be broken very easily live pings are going to be crucial right here we're able to get that kill there is kill number eight still not 100 percent sure where anybody is so now let's go ahead we're just playing our high ground now i hear one pushing up so let's go ahead and get this kill right here and then let's look at minimap minimap right there we got one down below we got one flying in and we have one down below over here i'm only playing trios so once again exactly what i told you guys make sure you're taking advantage of that extra information that you get now let's go ahead and keep rolling here not 100 percent sure where these guys are but we are going to go ahead and re-engage down below sure enough he's right in front of me can't quite get that knock right there so now we're going to go ahead and fly over didn't mean to go down right here and then we are going to catch an enemy as we rotate to the buy station notice we are going to play our positioning 
guys. Not something I talked about too much. I will be talking about a little bit more. Positioning matters. Playing that head glitch right there. We're able to easily get that kill. Look at minimap. One straight ahead of me. We just got to execute here, guys. We got to know this guy's coming around the corner. So there is kill number 12. Um, the other thing I will say, guys, left side here. Notice these guys. And then I'll jump into what I was going to say. Watch this. We get the kill. This, I don't know. This is, I don't, I don't know. I, I honestly don't know, guys. I don't know who's on whose team anymore. But, like, we're playing tree. Oh, no, we're playing quads. Just kidding. I, we're not playing trios. Um, so, I got two over to my left side here. We're going to engage that immediately. I love trios. I play trios most. I forgot we were playing quads early on here. Um, still working on pacing for a 20 bomb. My whole goal is to help you drop a lot of 20s. That's really what I feel like is achievable for everybody. So, still working on what that pacing is going to look like, but it does feel a little bit like 6 6 4, four. Six in the first, six in the second, four in the third, four in endgame. Uh, trust your high alert, right? You heard me talk about that earlier. Obviously, I'm, I'm live pinging this guy to try to get a sense of where he's going. I don't want him to be able to get away before... I can actually get the down, right? I don't want to give up my element of surprise. So now we go ahead and work our way up top here. And this leads me to tip number nine. Tip number nine, guys, is going to be sprinting while plating. Something we did a lot on Ashika, especially in those close quarters, but it's really valuable now because we can finesse even more and with the increased health. So there's kind of two situations that we use sprinting while plating, and one of these, a lot of you do not do, you guys don't do it at all. So sprinting while plating to finesse, right? If there's an enemy kind of like right around this corner, I can immediately start sprinting while plating. I can take advantage of the increased movement speed and I can get away. But this is also one of them here. I'm not necessarily taking advantage of the the movement speed but like i am getting over here because i know that there's enemies over here i get the down i know there's people over by the bridge here so i'm already pushing towards where i want to get to so i can easily get this kill right here this is going to be kill number 14 once again we just see playing a little bit of positioning we're going to play a little bit of positioning here especially based on um especially based on minimap pings and where people actually are once again guys going back to what i said tip number what three four five i don't know what it was rotations right Notice we rotated out of the stadium, and all of a sudden, we're right back in the stadium. So, you know, you don't always have to rotate far to drop high kill games as long as you are in the action. We get that break right there. Let's go ahead and keep the pressure on. Now, the last kind of tip number 10 here that I want to talk about, I am going to talk about it a little bit early just because I know we're going to be, you know, just kind of running back and forth here, is going to be map knowledge, guys. We are, it, it, depending on when you're watching this, this is like the third day that Vondel's out that I'm recording this. So, the map is still very new. As we get better and as we play it more, we're going to start to learn the map um, even more. We're going to learn like more jump spots. We're going to learn the finesse spots. We're going to understand how to challenge people. One tip that I will give you when it comes to map knowledge, and I talked about somebody last, uh, I talked to somebody in my coaching program about this last night, which is sight lines. A lot of people are, are like, I don't know the jump spots. I don't know the sight lines. Guys, just, just run around and jump on stuff. You can pretty much parkour this entire map. Just find a sight line where you can go ahead and challenge somebody. And then from there, you can find that win to be able to get that down and then from there you can figure out what's next now let's go ahead and start to work on end game right here the, oh man it's just so beautiful guys that's the 50 hp difference right there it's the only time i'm gonna say it that guy just gets out shot right there and we're gonna easily be able to get that kill that's 18 thus far we got seven other teams left i will say guys end games aren't as chaotic as a sheikah in my opinion but they are significantly healthier. So don't be afraid to, or don't be concerned if you're, if you're like at 14 or something going into endgame, you can easily drop a ton of kills in endgame. A uh, quick little bonus tip right here, guys, 18K. Now you get the UAV. We pop three of them, which is the advanced. Here's the biggest difference with an advanced UAV right here. If you played Warzone 1, guys, when you pop three UAVs, they were, they basically what happened is you pop the first one, which lasts 30 seconds. You pop the second one, which lasts 30 seconds. And then you pop the third one, which lasts 30 seconds. Well, all in all, what ends up happening is by the time you have all three of them popped, you get a 28 second advanced UAV. Well, on this in Warzone 2, they stack. So we are going to get 60 seconds of an advanced UAV right here, which is so beyond worth it. I spent way too much time focusing on those guys. Guys, if you have 18K, pop an advanced UAV. You get a sense of where every single person is. Can I, I, I forget if I can pop another. Oh, I bought TCAP back there. Now we're going to go ahead and work over. We got a bunch of people over to our left side. You're going to see a little bit of lack of map knowledge here, guys. This is where we just start learning the map a little bit more. This is kind of when I was going to save it for, but I decided to give it to you early. Like, I don't know the map that well yet, so we got to learn, like, how do we quickly get to a window to peek out stadium. We got to, like, learn these little areas right here, especially kind of, you know, you're going to see me finesse in these buildings to my right side right here and be able to... Uh, kind of use the water to my advantage, trusting high alert. We're going to use our cover right here and challenge. Increased health. I love it. 
Now we're going to go ahead and get that thirst. We have 20 kills right there. There's our 20. So let's go ahead and see if we can clutch the dub. But I got to be careful because I was being looked at there. Still trusting high alert, guys. If you remember, I talked about this on Ashika a lot which is trusting your high alert in close quarters. High alert isn't just for when you're fighting long range. Like, I know that nobody's looking at me at this point, right? So I'm in an okay spot to be able to play it up. There's kill number 20. We still got six teams left. Still pretty healthy here. There is another kill right there. Joe's going to hit his throwing knives as always. You know, you, you just got to hit your throwing knives, guys. You got to hit the throwing knives because I could have been put in a bad spot there if I did not get, uh, if I ended up not being able to get that or maybe that second teammate was close by. There's kill number 21, guys. Still playing positioning right here notice that we're not over peaking this always thinking about head glitches guys this is a big one right here especially on this map you know always think about this head glitch right this is a i'm a hard target to hit right here versus i can see pretty much his whole entire body because of my positioning now he ends up getting to cover here the other one is hip fire before he ads boom that guy goes down good night good luck have fun requeuing five other teams left we're at 24 kills or, sorry, 22 kills. We still have eight other people left here. So, we're just going to play our... Endgame is the same, guys. Endgame is no different if you are subscribed. In circle with cover, then power position. You want to be in circle. Make sure that you have cover. That is the most important thing. And then, of course, we are thinking about that power position of can we get our high ground. High ground endgame allows you to fly across. It allows you to rotate early really easily. Um, it's not always the best spot to be rotating, but it can be super helpful. Now, we got one over to the right side here. We're just going to go ahead and anticipate and execute, guys. Anticipate and execute around corners. That's a pretty easy kill right there. Kill number 23. And we're just going to keep the pressure on. Like, I know I'm on a burner here. I know I'm on a burner. I think somebody, oh, one of my teammates called it too. Like, oh, Joe's got 23. Where are we going? We got to fight over this way. Um, You hear that, guys? You hear the fighting? If you made it this far, thank you so much. I appreciate it. We hear the fighting straight ahead. Right? We hear the fighting. We have them on UAV. So we're down to four other teams. We got a huge advantage. We just can't choke this. That's pretty much what it comes down to. Still going to challenge me. He's broken right there. There's kill number 24. Ocho is going to go ahead and push in here. He's going to fight a ton in close quarters. We're going to go ahead and push in right here. We're going to clear the stairwell. We're just going to go ahead and challenge Tim the Tatman. Challenge the last one right here. So, guys, I hope you found today's video helpful. Ten initial tips for Vondell. As I always say, TCAP's going to steal my freaking execution to finish it off. But, guys, thank you so much. I appreciate it. There's the 67 as a squad. Let's get better today, and I will see you tomorrow.